move through tube. Hello, hello. I will be posting this on Thursday, although at this exact moment it is actually Tuesday. Um, Melissa, first of all, thank you for posting your vlog. It was lovely. Lots going on. Megan? Alright, so... The third hour biotech moves. So I sort of consider like microbiology and biotech to be the same class because they're both semester electives that go together and they're with Richardson and they're awesome and you learn about stuff that I think is really cool, like enzymes and cell types and gram versus gram positive versus gram negative, peptidoglycan, and yeah, all that cool stuff. So last semester it was terrific. The microbiology, I had it on uh, first hour on B days. So I'd come into school and I just when I started getting my coffee buzz, I'd have class and I'd be like super stoked for microbiology and then I'd have the rest of my day. It was the first class of the day, so I was super focused for it and all that. This semester I had biotech third hour on B days. So after I've been through band and choir and I just had lunch and in the case today I had to go take a test for MAPS testing before I went to biotech and you just get this consistent pattern of me sort of being like spacey and sort of a nut during that class, much as I love that class. So that is the Scots biotech moves. I mostly laugh at random things for the majority of the class period. And although I retain the information for the most part, it is not what it used to be for me. But yeah, I, I generally am pretty nutty about biotech stuff. I typically make jokes that only make sense if you're aware of what rather specific thing I'm talking about. Probably my favorite example of this in bacterial cells. They have petioglycan in their cell walls, which is what holds it rigid. Um, if cells don't, if bacterial cells do not have petioglycan, then due to osmosis, water would flood in their cells to try and make the the concentration of particles on the inside of the cell the same as the outside, and they would explode. And so they have to have petioglycan to hold themselves rigid. Once again, it's called petioglycan, and within your body, you naturally have uh, microflora, so just bacteria that are present in healthy individuals. Um, it makes a huge percentage of your cells inside of you end up being bacteria. And so I decided that would be my version of smack talk to go up to someone and say, the helpful bacteria in your gut don't have peptidoglycan walls, they have walls of peptidoglycant. <laughs> so, you know, that sort of thing. And I have others, and I used to write them down in a notebook. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I was thinking about this, but <laughs> I've always wanted to make this joke that I think yeast are so romantic. So yeast are um, single-celled organisms. They're used in bread and beer and stuff because uh, when they ferment without oxygen, when they respirate anaerobically, they produce alcohol as a byproduct, which makes them useful for stuff. But yeah, so single-celled organisms, but they actually reproduce sexually meaning that the uh, progeny of yeast contains DNA both from a father and a mother cell. So unlike bacteria, which just split via binary fission. So what happens, and this is just the most romantic thing, is the, the male yeast cells versus the female yeast cells have different sorry, surface proteins that work as receptors. And so they both male and female yeast are constantly releasing a it's a hormone that goes and like seeks out these receptors. Okay. So female yeast cells send out a hormone that is compatible with the male yeast cell receptor. And so when a male yeast cell receives this, this uh, signal, and it's like met up, it knows that there's a female yeast cell in that direction. And so it physically starts growing in that direction. They grow towards each other and it works both ways. And so that, that's just beautiful. I was watching a video on why avocados shouldn't exist the other day because SciShow is amazing. Love me some Green Brothers and all of their, like, associated people. Yeah. But yeah. And so one of the things they mentioned is, like, how um, Ground's Laws used to eat avocados and they were, like, had a symbiotic relationship. And, you know, they, they died out at a very similar time as people started spreading out around these areas. And I did not realize that, like... People were around before brown saws went extinct, and that's crazy to me. Like, had I been born X numbers of years earlier, I could have met a giant ground sloth, like Rusty, 
If young, who rusty is, shame on you. All the best, guys.